So we normally celebrate the latest technology here on ATW, but this week we're going retro to celebrate something a little older. Oh, so you mean like back in the days when our word processors didn't put that squiggly little line underneath our misspelt words? I shudder just thinking about it. Actually, I'm thinking back a little further than that. How far back are we talking about here? Because honestly, that's about the earliest I can remember. Ugh, don't make me feel old. <laughs> I'm talking about a device that was perfected in the 19th century, was a fixture in offices in the 20th century, and you don't see it much anymore unless you wander into a lawyer's office. I think I know what it is, a landline. Oh, funny man McLaughlin. Nope, I'm talking about the typewriter. Oh, well, that's pretty fascinating too. To keep us posted on the typewriter scene in Vancouver, we check in with AMI's Grant Hardy. I was like, what is this monstrosity? Who invented this and why? Seeing a typewriter for the first time, Emily had lots of questions. But after using them at her after school program, she's come to appreciate the machines. I like them, they're really cool, they're fun. It's nice to like do something I know we don't do now, but we, I could have done if I was like, I don't know, 50 years older. It's like a old fashioned computer, pretty much just with ink and no screen, and it's better for my eyes. Yeah. Try that again, see if it works. Typewriters are part of the Writers Exchange Literacy Program. Its aim is to get inner city kids excited about reading and writing. Sarah Maitland is the creative director. A lot of the kids that we work with don't necessarily love reading and writing when they come into the program, so we have to find creative ways to get them engaged with literacy. Giving a kid a typewriter and saying, hey, play with this typewriter is so much more fun than if you give a kid a blank piece of paper and a pencil and say, here, write me an essay. So we find that the typewriters get the kids really excited to read and write and do all sorts of crazy creative things. Sarah found that writing on typewriters helped her as well. It takes away the pressure of the blank page somehow when you're having fun and smashing keys instead of just staring at that white screen. And it's so hard <laughs> to, to write your first sentence when you're staring at a screen, but when you have a typewriter in front of you, somehow this creativity can flow out of you easier. Hello from the other side. <laughs> but sometimes that flow can be disrupted, especially when the mechanics of the machine get gummed up. A lot of people don't know how to fix them because we don't use them in this generation. So knowing how to fix them is like, whoa, how do you do that? They had to put a stencil, which the typewriter uh, created by a typewriter that the ribbon lift wouldn't lift. One person who does know how to fix typewriters is 84-year-old Art Skill, Vancouver's only professional typewriter repairman. Operating from his house garage in West Vancouver, Art is busier than ever. The machine can lose the uh, adjustments from just from use. The keys themselves can get damaged from clashing. The bars can clash and take the leg off of H, for instance. I wonder the space bar doesn't seem to be working on this one. Well, it's in the case. Oh. Even with these maintenance issues, Art has seen a resurgence in use, especially from a younger crowd. Young people from as low as 11 to 19. I don't know if, if they don't feel like a computer is really giving them time to think. You can do it so quickly that it, and there's no sound. The typewriter has a definite sound. Sometimes they use the small L. Oh, okay, yeah, that works. If you go from the personal touch, handwriting's first, typing's next, and the computer is so perfect, it's not very personal. Maybe that's why typewriters seem to capture the imagination of adults and kids. For Emily, telling her classmates about her typewriter use gets them interested. They're like get really curious and excited. Because most people, when they hear a typewriter at school, they're like, where is it? Show me the typewriter. And Emily can show them, thanks to folks like Art and Sarah, who are making sure that there's always a working typewriter for writers to leave their mark. I'm so glad there are guys like Art Skill around because based on what we just heard, typewriters seem to inspire people to write by making it interesting and fun. And fun fact, 
A couple of early typewriting devices developed in the 19th century were first developed for the blind community. Now that is cool, but maybe not too surprising. You could argue that many tech devices embraced by the mainstream community were first made popular in the blind community. Everything from audiobooks to tablet-like devices. Anyway, cool story, and Emily is so cute. It just goes to show that whether you're teaching literacy to kids, checking out your local museum, or find yourself in a lawyer's office, you just might stumble across a typewriter one day. I kind of wish I had one.